Viewer discretion is advised. Video entails description of graphic violence, rape, and pedophilia. Seeing the last season of Attack on Titan come out has made me remember when it first aired back in 2013. I distinctly remember everyone acting as if it was the most violent anime they've ever seen. Well, it probably was for that generation of weebs. However, that was par for the core during my anime glory days. Like many, I got into anime in middle school. And for some reason, this era 2005 to 2009 had this air of elitism about shonen animes. For some reason, I felt above watching the big three. No, instead what was popular in my circle was the most vulgar shit you could consume without crossing straight into Gyaro. Not that we knew what that was yet. The series that defined what anime was to me at 12 years old was... Helsing. I am so fucking hard right now! Higarashi. <laughs> School days. And Elf in the Lead. Easily the most repulsive shit I've ever read. It draws you in with an opening that sounds like it's straight from a Requiem Mass, and then pairs it with remakes of masterpieces by Gustav Klimt. It then turns head and introduces you to the most generic horny male protagonist and his inexplicable harem of girls. The Guild of Klimt's work can only do so much to conceal this colostomy bag of a series. At 12 years old, I remember the thrill of watching a naked anime lady rip apart men and giggling about how the protagonist ended up with his cousin. But that wasn't enough for me. I had to go edgier. I had to read the manga. What I remember from the manga is so foul, I'm not sure what's worse. If this shit was actually published and other kids read it, or alternatively, my mind was actually able to come up with this shit on its own. Now, about a decade later, I'm going back to confirm what the fuck I subjected my child self to. Right off the bat, it's just spreading misinformation about what mutations are known as in genetics. Uh, mutations are what drive genetic diversity and ultimately evolution. Uh, good chance someone watching this is a mutant. Not really a big deal. So it starts out in this top secret facility containing a new superhuman being known as Diclonius. Her name is Lucy. She can use telekinesis and is super dangerous. Then some shit happens that looks like it's straight out of Nyan Neko Sugar Girls. I think we were supposed to find that endearing. Uh, now, for some reason, they've decided to move Lucy. Also, this place looks like the same facility they kept Santana in in Battle Tendency. So, um, obviously she gets loose, she kills everyone. For some reason, they are shooting bullets at the superhuman, which should just be able to grab them and shoot them back at her attackers, but, yeah, whatever. The bullets just make her naked. Last shot to the head takes off her helmet and gives her brain damage. Generic male protagonist and his love interest find her, take her home, and then she pisses on the floor. She can only say new now, so that's her name. So she's clearly severely mentally handicapped and breaks a seashell, which is a momentum from the protagonist's sister. And so he yells at her and tells her to get the fuck out. Feds show up, tell him she's a mass murderer. He finds her, feds come back, police brutality ensues. She switches back to Lucy before they can kill her, and then she's back to Mew again and returns to the protagonist's house to give him some seashells. Haha, <laughs> wacky, etchy shenanigans. Also, this series is literally killing me with this anime science. This is not what a pineal gland is. This is not mitochondrial Eve theory. This is out of Africa theory, and it's not even correctly summarizing that either. The protag gets sick, cousin comes over, and then the protag mentions his dad dying in a car accident. The cousin corrects him and says, no, that's uh, not what happened. He has apparently repressed the memory of his dad and sister being torn apart by none other than child Lucy. Jesus Christ, the eyes are getting bigger. Protag has a moral crisis over whether it's okay to molest someone with the mind of a toddler as long as she wants it. I cannot believe I remember her name, but Mayu shows up to return the umbrella from the Fed incident that happened earlier. Mew hits her head and becomes Lucy. This is some real launch shit right now. 
Lucy remembers almost killing the protag as a child and leaves and goes and kills Mayu's dog instead. Just kidding. Nana, another Diclonia, shows up to take Lucy home. She's a pacifist, though. But she's still fighting? Anyways, Lucy rips off all her limbs. Feds show up to shoot at her. Seeing the chief triggers Lucy to start reverting back into Mew, so she runs away. So the reason Lucy is important is because she's the only Diclonius that's able to sexually reproduce. So the Prime Minister wants to fuck her. It's revealed Mayu is a runaway because her stepdad was sexually abusing her, and also she stole that motherfucking dog. On the verge of freezing slash starving to death, Mayu returns to the protag's home and surprise! It's her birthday! She lives there now. Nana gets prosthetics, Neil goes to university. At university, she meets the fed she blinded in the beach fight. Turns out Mew gave him a disease so that any offspring he has will be Diclonius, so they want to castrate him. They at least guess correctly that it would be a retrovirus, but uh, that's not how vaccines work. The fed doctor reveals he actually wants more Diclonius, so he tells him to go out and fuck or it loses balls. So that same fed doctor is teaching in the cousin's college course that they just have Mew sitting in for some reason. He says that he's her uncle and that kidnapping is a crime. They leave her with him. Fed Doc then drugs Mew so he can knock her out and rape her. It knocks Mew out and Lucy wakes up. Fed Doc is bald, so he must die. Blind Fed gets eyes again, then the robot hand. I think he's supposed to look like the Terminator. Uh, he meets Mayu on the beast where she had called an ambulance for him and he vows to protect her. Oh, and then Mayu reveals she knows Nyu. He's gonna kill her, but she calls in the favor that he just gave her five seconds ago, and he concedes. Flashback to young Lucy, and for some reason she's just in a normal class of kids who bully her, cause she just has horns. Then they kill her dog, and she kills all of them. Oh, and the protag runs in after and says her horns are cool. It's revealed that the protag was Lucy's first friend, but he's only there for the summer. She gets detached and goes to a festival that she knows he'll attend. She sees him with his cousin and collapses in a fit of jealousy? Then instead of anyone trying to help the collapsed crying child, they then just talk shit so she kills them all. Lucy remembers this. Protag still doesn't. Lucy reverts to new. Cut to Fed Chief Dad. Uh, giving Nana a lethal injection for some reason? But then she wakes up on the beach with money instead. And then the Terminator is there. For some reason, we're supposed to believe this gun can outmatch telekinesis. Nana launches her prosthetic arm at him, Finding out that they both lost their arms to Lucy, they decide to be comrades. Zero drip. This girl wears a diaper. Uh, this lady was just introduced and the chief killed her for some reason. I had literally repressed the diaper fetish. What the fuck is this? Why is her font written like this? Does she only whisper? She sings. Mayu meets Nana again. Nana commits a federal offense. Mayu then reveals Lucy's location to someone trying to kill her again. So Dr. Lady lived, they said it. They said the title. I've been skipping over all the H-E stuff, but Jesus Christ. Mew makes Diaper-chan piss herself. Mayu brings Nana home and for some reason, her horns trigger the protag, even though Mew's never did. Nana said it's on site. She is politely asked to leave. Turns out Nana knocked the new out of her and Lucy's back. Lucy wills herself out of existence and now new's back. New professes her love for Protag and cuts her hair and clothes to look like his dead little sister. Cousin runs away, crying in jealousy. Finally, someone says Chief Fed Dad's name. It's Karama. The daughter he said he killed is alive and is actually a Diclonius. Her name is Mariko. They put bombs on her. This guy is now living with five girls. Mariko is sent out to capture Lucy, but finds Nana instead and strips her. Mariko is about to kill Nana, but mentions sending her papa after her, and so Dark Nana is released. 
Karama shows up, Mariko's powers were deactivated as she realizes the guy Nana calls Papa is actually her own father. They just shot an unarmed baby. Can we please kill this dizzy bitch again? So Lucy was going around and infecting everyone with her vectors and producing a bunch of horned children. Karama was then torturing the children they didn't kill in the name of science. His daughter, Mariko, is born with horns, and knowing exactly what's going to happen to her in his lab, he decides to kill her. His wife loses too much blood due to excitement and... rage? He tries to kill his daughter again, his wife walks over, bleeds some more, and then she dies. She is five years old! I have no clue what this meant. Oh, it was a joke by the translators. Hilarious. Mariko tricks the guy into giving her the code to defuse the bomb on her heart. Now she's free to kill whoever she wants. Why the fuck is this here? Kurama hands off Nana to the Terminator and goes to be with Mariko. He tells Mariko he loves her, and then they're hit with a missile. Beautiful. Don't worry, they were fake bomb types, so they were totally safe, and both of them live. Mariko is now... Mew. The chief is planning to drop a bomb that will spread the aerosolized virus. Karama plans to hold New hostage to stop the bomb. The bomb then just explodes in the background. Karama shoots New. Lucy wakes up. She tries to kill Karama, which makes Mariko wake up. Mariko's bombs apparently weren't deactivated. Lucy uses the remote as bait and de-legs her. Lady Doc tries to retrieve the remote, is beheaded, and then Mariko suicide bombs Lucy. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut it off there on a cliffhanger. I've been editing as I record, so I'm sleepy, but I want the dopamine hit of finishing a video. Stick around for part two, because I haven't even gotten to the worst character yet. Also, if you have any fucked up manga buried in the recesses of your mind, let me know. I'll read that shit. Anyways, thanks for watching.